All right, so let's start linking up some parameters. So on the right, let's dive into our table and let's select our transform. Because remember the transform here is what we can use to determine the height of our table. And so let's think about this for a little bit. So let's maybe, okay, maybe we want to, maybe we want to split this up. Maybe it will be more user-friendly if we have some more parameters for this. Now that I'm thinking about it. All right, so let's remove this. So we'll go and do parameter interface again. Let's apply. Let's maybe make a float. So just a regular single float and call this height table and then height table. So this is going to be the height. Uh, do another float, maybe call it uh, size x and then table, oh, it's just size x. And I have another one called size y, size y. Maybe that will just be easier to control. So let's just do it like that. All right, and let's start linking this up. So let's right click on the height table, paste relative references in the height. So now we have a controller here, which we can use to put the height of our table. Let's do it with the size x and size y as well. So copy parameter. So let's paste relative references on x, copy parameter, paste relative references on a y. So it's going to be like a little bit like this. And you can also set defaults for this. Um, right now, it doesn't really matter. But let's say if you acetize it, for example, you could put it to a default for one. So just like this. Doesn't really matter for that. We'll, we'll probably get into that later. So now you can see we have controls for uh, for our table. Now maybe we want some controls for the thickness of our legs. So let's put another float. Leg thickness, leg thickness. We're probably going to run into a problem when we're going to do the leg thickness thing. I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, so let's take the leg thickness and paste that into our relative references of the lag. All right, so now you can see we can move it up, but you can also see that it's breaking when, so, cause right now it's gonna get bigger and then our, well, it's, it's not insetting properly. So maybe another thing that we might wanna do for this to work properly is that maybe what we wanna do is, so if we go to the table here, Remember, we were sort of insetting the size where we were copying it to because of they needed to be inset. So what we could also do is say that we want it to be one minus the thickness of the legs and maybe do it in here as well. One minus and then paste relative references. One minus thickness of the legs and then go down there. So that's probably a little bit too extreme. So maybe we could say, put the thickness of the legs between brackets and then divide this number by, let's say five or something. Probably still a little bit too much. Let's say 10. And Let's do the same thing over there. Copy and paste it. So it's probably a little bit not enough. So let's maybe say nine. Okay, so it does need to be 10. Maybe make it even, maybe make it eight. All right, something like this, I think should probably be pretty okay. Just breaking a little bit because of the poly bubble, probably. So we turn that off. But you can see this is working a little bit more like we'd expect it to. Um, I'd say probably maybe even subtract 
just a little bit from the entire thing. So just zero two. Oh. So again, you can just type simple math operations inside of inside of this. Just gonna minus. Right. So now we have the lag controls. So I think let's make this a little bit less extreme. So I think those will be the, the controls for our table. All right. So now that I've shown you how to do the table, I want to challenge you to try to do the same with the chair. And then while you're at it, maybe I try to add some extra controls. So I have gone ahead and added some extra controls myself. So, and uh, all of these uh, will be available in the HIP file that's downloadable on my website, timvanhousting.com. So for Patreon supporters, you can download it there. So I add some extra controls, like for example, I can make the legs circular. So I can have little nice circular legs. Uh, I can rotate the legs. Um, well, I have controls for the height and for the size, of course. And I have other controls like bending the back, for example. Uh, so that's something that we haven't discussed yet, but that's the, uh, there's a bend, um, a bend swap, which is pretty straightforward, but that, that's, that's used in the hip file. I have uh, some controls to roll the backside. So there's a whole bunch of controls that you can, uh, that you can well, try out basically. So this hip file is downloadable. You can look into it, but really try to do this for yourself. Because if you're going to try it for yourself, that's the that's the fastest way to learn instead of just watching me do it. So really try try this for yourself. And if you're done with that and you check this hip file, if you want to learn more about general procedural modeling, so actual procedural modeling, um, I can suggest you check out Rohan Dalvi. Uh, he has a whole bunch of courses on like doing procedural modeling. So, uh, so for example, there's this one on like making a bus and he has a whole bunch of other stuff. So, so there's an, an additional uh, procedural modeling part also included in this course, uh, which you can watch later. I advise you to watch this after the part from the squid. I will remind you when to watch that. Uh, so that's for Patreon supporters only. It's over an hour in length and we're gonna make this procedural bridge. Uh, so this was the original that I created. And then we're also doing a, uh, we're building this entire thing from scratch. So there's a, yeah, a whole bunch of, uh, of procedural stuff you can sort of change. So it's going to be quite interesting as well as things. So that will be for Patreon supporters only. So you can go, if you go to timvanhelsing.com and you go, go to the Houdini um, course index, you can find it there. Um, and then you can, if you're uh, if you're in the twenty dollar tier, you can watch this. So that will, uh, I guess, uh, make procedural modeling also uh, a bit of bit more in depth. But again, this will cover a couple of concepts that we haven't discussed yet. So don't watch it right now, but maybe wait until after you're a bit a little bit for, further along in this course. And again, I will remind you when is a good time to watch that. Just so you know that there will be more procedural modeling stuff. So uh, that will also be coming. Now let's move into the next video where we're finally going to start talk a little bit about VOPs. That's a lower level uh, way of working than SOPs where we're going to work actually directly onto the points and make our own sort of build our own uh, tools to be able to do stuff. So uh, that's going to be very exciting and super powerful. So uh, see you there. Thank you.